I'd do a little painting uh, cityscape and we would talk a bit about some of the uh, ideas uh, when you go out into a town and set up in a, a very public place. Now here we are in Estremoz and it's not uh, crazy public. It's small town Portugal, so everyone who comes by will normally say uh, hello to me. I'm actually wearing a baseball cap, which makes me stand out as a foreigner. And I tend to get a lot less uh, hellos when I'm uh, wearing a baseball cap. I do think, I mean, it's kind of a ridiculous thing to say, but uh, sort of dressing in a certain way can make your life a lot easier when you're uh, painting landscapes or cityscapes. You know, I've been in uh, situations where I was painting in uh, in Italy especially and where I, there were other painters there and they were kind of covered in paint. I tried to dress slightly elegantly. I wear you know, collared shirts. A great you know, a bit of noise. And the police chased the other painters away and they let left me alone. What's happened is, in Europe at least, I'm not sure about the States, but you have a lot of artists who have gone out into the street and started uh, painting and asking for money, which is technically illegal. And they sell the paintings off the easel. Other uh, artists who pay for a stand tend to get kind of annoyed about this because they're paying, you know, to be able to sell uh, paintings in public, and they'll often, I've seen them go and look for the police, find the police, and then drag them back to uh, chase off the, the landscape painter who's painting without a permit. So a few ways around this, I mean, here in Estremoz, it shouldn't be an issue, but if you're painting somewhere like uh, painting in Trafalgar Square in London a few times, and what I've done is I've always gone and looked for a cop before I set up. I did this in uh, Times Square in New York to find a police officer before you start painting and ask them if it's okay, explain that it's uh, that you're not going to be selling the painting off the easel and they will often um, give you permission and then uh, none of the other police will come and bother you. At least that's been my experience. So I'm not sure if you can still hear me, but uh, some other ideas, I mean, generally when looking for a composition outdoors, you know, the, it's the same idea you have looking for a composition everywhere. If you have uh, repeating elements and all of your elements are different sizes, it's going to be uh, make for a more interesting uh, subject. Now, when I set up here, I'll just show you. There's a uh, you also want to try to set up in areas where you're not going to have a car come and block your view. I mean, that's a really common issue. Uh, let's see some other things. Um, obviously, if you're going to paint in a really touristy area, often some of the prettier. Uh, more picturesque places are also overrun with tourists. And then the question is always, you know, headphones or no headphones. Um, if you wear headphones, especially sort of isolate the sound, you can hear people talking to you in the distance, but uh, you don't feel obliged to respond. It allows you to focus more. Uh, a lot of people, some people who don't like the music because it distracts them or they want to be aware of their surroundings, they'll put headphones in to um, look like they're listening to music, but then of course there's no music on. Uh, another thing that I often do is just paint without the headphones if it's somewhere where it's not too busy and I want to just be nice to the people. Uh, I find that uh, it depends on what country you're in. Some countries uh, which are used to artists, um, Italy, France, Morocco, for example, People tend to, to give you space. They might bring you an ice cream or a, a bottle of water, but they tend not to, to be too chatty. I've painted in other countries where just everybody wants to talk to you, um, and it can be kind of difficult to concentrate. So anyways, as I was saying before about compositional ideas, you know, the same uh, 
thing that we often say, you want to look for areas where you have any repeating shapes, um, an interesting variety, you know, unfortunate tangents. I mean, here, let's see, one of the, when I first arrived, it took me a little while to set up, I had a, this is, was the shadow in the, the line of the wall. The shadow kind of arrived right at the line of the wall. Now it's kind of moved in and it's defining the shape of the, the stairs more, which works much better. But, um, you know, the same rules that we use elsewhere, you want to try to avoid some of these compositional issues. And if you have a shadow that um, uh, runs tangent to the wall, it can just look a bit weird. We want to use the, the light to kind of draw our uh, forms, our shapes. So, you know, it's going to be much nicer right now. For example, this shadow starts right where the ending up to be a much louder street than I was expecting. This uh India. No no obrigado. People are very nice here, they ask if the car is gonna bother you. Um yeah, sometimes you get people who really just set up right in front of you, and I've even seen a couple of times where people did it on purpose just to, because they didn't like painters for some reason. Anyways, um, yeah, the Portuguese are, uh, are very nice and welcoming, so. Yeah, another thing too when we're talking, looking at um, what time of day to paint, what I like, you know, it's about midday now, and what's going to end up happening is we're going to have shadow and light. But the light, especially a bit later, this light should drop down and then define the form of the street. And that's going to happen because the sun's quite high. Now it can be really nice to paint city scenes, um, you know, with a very low sun, but what you end up happening is you'll have shadow sort of all along your buildings, and then the kind of golden light up here, maybe even less, which can make a very, you know, it's just going to be interesting in one area, and then everything else is going to be quite dark, so that is something to um, consider, and it's why I often prefer um, painting my cityscapes uh, in midday with the, the kind of a high sun. So I have the sun on my panel just because it's the only way to get the camera so that you can also see what I'm painting. But normally I would turn the, um, the panel just like to there and then uh, yeah, Get the, make sure it's all in shadow, but for now I'm going to work like this because I think it's uh, set up in a way where you can see what I'm doing. And then a really nice way to work in shadows in general, but here in the city especially, is you just kind of mix a, kind of a warm gray. You know, I say often when you're struggling to, to find a color, it's often a warm gray. But then you just, I mean here, because of, you know, we're in Portugal, everything's white, so there's a lot of reflected light. But what you can then do is just kind of mass in everything with a wash.
I'm not really looking at any of the shapes of the forms. I'm just massing in everything. soft edges which is kind of the, you know the way we see shadows is everything in them being quite soft and then King reflected light um, you know you can add I know in the studio people often say not to uh, add white to, in your shadows but it's definitely not the case in landscape painting you're gonna want to always uh, add white and titanium white at that. But the important thing is to, you know, compress the values like we've talked about uh, before. We're outside, so basically you're going to look at the sky always and make sure that your shadows are very dark uh, next to the sky, even if they are. Uh, much lighter than uh, the shadow area. So again, keeping the values very compressed. And this down here is bad design because we have the, the yellow and the black changing over right where the shadow starts. So we'll wait and see if that improves, and otherwise we'll have to fake it later. bit this is going to get more interesting in this area when the um, when this light creeps down the things that are going to change first. So obviously if you really like a particular shadow, um, go ahead and put that in. But, you know, be aware that this shadow is going to creep down and then creep across and then this side will be in light and this side will be in shadow. So uh, always keep in mind, you know, what your situation is and what your effect is, and don't be afraid to come back on another day too, if you uh, 
like down here, this is all kind of lit up, but that's probably going to change really quickly. Then that back street is. Oops. Uh, let's see. No, actually, take it back. Something's quite far. But we can add a, a bit of mud to that just to, to show that it's a bit further away. colors up a little bit there. Give it a bit more interest and drama. And, you know, we're mixing grays, so we try to always keep them going sort of towards the purple or towards the green. Um, don't be afraid of mixing really green shadows outside. It can be really nice. As we get down in here, keep the edges really soft. this view because I've walked down this street all the time and never seen a single person on it but today so you have masked in the grays and now I'm kind of going in with the uh, uh, masking with kind of a general and now I'm going to go in and make it slightly more uh, accurate important things with shadows is that we see if something's lighter in the light then that has to continue on. I'm still not sure what to do about this for the black switches from the yellow to the black. And there was a very popular Portuguese queen who died in this town, so uh, the 15th century, and that's why still today there's a number of the buildings of the black border is a sign of mourning. Thank you. 
And I mean, there's always having lines go out of the corners in great design, but can be difficult. What you can do is just kind of fade it out to not such a strong. I'm keeping the lights quite thick and the dark's quite thin. interesting thought is vertical versus horizontal. I personally much prefer horizontal landscapes. 
but um, I mean, obviously for a um, you know a subject like this, where it's such a obviously vertical subject, it seems kind of bizarre to try to squeeze it into a uh, horizontal canvas. And, I mean, just to be a bit mercenary, there are also a lot of people who, uh, clients who want to buy vertical landscapes for whatever reason or, you know, space they need to fill. So uh, I do have to consider, in, you know, the financial aspect. There's also a wonderful, uh, you know, art historical, uh, precedent of some of the most wonderful uh, cityscapes being done in vertical so but uh, I think it's Stapleton Kearns who said that if God had wanted us to paint verticals he would have put one eye on over the other and I also kind of feel that uh, uh, one reason I like the, the horizontal landscape is it is much more how um, human vision sees things. And since I'm trying to paint what I see, I feel like a verticalism, I mean a horizontal, sort of not too long and thin, you know, where is, um, is ideal. So now as this shadow creeps along this way, it's actually getting better and better, so I think if I really want to figure out how to resolve that issue, it's really, I don't have a clever solution that I can invent, so I'm just waiting. But as the shadow creeps along, I think it's actually more picturesque, so we will also creep along uh, with it, follow it. to measure these angles. Because they often do very surprising things, such as that. And again, when I'm looking, I see it about the same length there and there. So I'll shorten it down here to make this one much longer. Okay, so this actually comes to about here. That's much higher. Okay. 
just like in uh, mannerism in Greek sculpture, it's the same with uh, landscapes where you're painting a building and you make it too short, it's going to be a little less picturesque than if you make it too long. So. I was returning to that idea of airing on the side of beauty. India. It's so funny, I was really sure my painting would be in shadow by now. But I mean, West is over there. Um, if you're painting European towns too, there's a, often the buildings lean. And I can't remember if I've mentioned this before, but if you paint them leaning, they're just going to look like you drew them wrong. So unless it's actually like the Leaning Tower of Pisa, something that everyone is going to recognize as a leaning building. Uh, you don't actually want to paint stuff leaning. Soft edges everywhere in the shadows. kind of struggling because the impasto was creating um, shadows and it was sort of darkening the whole uh, white area and since we're in Portugal where everything is very brilliant blinding light and I'm trying to paint black into white which isn't fun but you just take uh, which means you have to constantly dip every uh, little stroke sure about that 
the shadow cast by the gutter it really kind of breaks the form. So we might just hint it like that and then leave it. Looking now for sort of stuff that repeats and gets hopefully smaller as it moves back, including these little windows. And one thing that's starting to happen here is that as the shadow creeps down, getting more what I was hoping for, which is to have light on the black. So that we can see uh, you know basically it's gonna give us a sense of the ambient light because we'll see the how this is lighter than this and then these are very similar very tall right now um, I guess we'll wait and see if it gets even better later one thing, too, that you need is to sort of use the, the light to define the shape, so even though it's not doing that. Pull the yellow out here, too. But now just having that little touch of light there then kind of gives a much better sense of what's going on. On the other hand, that uh, shadow shape isn't very nice. You know, odd numbers are always more interesting, so we can try to uh, break this up a bit. You can do gradations too, so like if you want to have the edge here very dark and then have it get kind of lighter as it moves in, as long as it gets kind of light enough right next to the door to really give the sense of the luminosity in the wall.
that's not a good color, but I was kind of enjoying that blue. Take it warmer in here. Reflected light. And then much lighter and warmer here. Soft edges around these doors. This is wonderful. Light area now, right now, this and this are about the same size and shape. So we'll take this one a bit lighter to differentiate it. Take all of this softer and lighter too. And you really get the sense of the luminosity and the reflected light, not by making these areas really, really light, but by then going in and hitting the accents really dark. And I never sell on the streets. I was just thinking of that guy offering to buy the painting. I'll probably edit it out. But um, I mean, even when I was starting on, I had really, really low prices. Um, just people, I had people get like offended. I'd ask for a couple hundred dollars for a painting that had taken me a week. And uh, I just had such bad experiences with uh, people expecting to pay nothing that I've, I now just generally, anyone who asks if it's for sale, I say no. Uh, or it's uh, dealing. With the, uh, with their sticker shock, so. Yeah. Quite a nice painting outside in public areas, though, because you do get uh, people just appreciate it. You know, they really sometimes I've had situations where I paint something and people will tell me that they've passed it their whole lives and always thought it was beautiful. And just to see an artist uh, painting it kind of uh, validates what they had always felt. So, yeah. That's why I also don't always wear the headphones, because it can be kind of nice to have these exchanges with people. Um, I've had some insane people, too, come up and 
tell me that uh, this kind of art was really boring and that I should do modern art because this had all been done before. And I had people get really offended because I say that paintings aren't for sale. <laughs> One woman in Tuscany had like this really public meltdown about it. Um, and so, <laughs> uh, they are an artist, a street artist, as she called me, uh, deny her the painting. But, I mean, those were, like I said, two situations in uh, 30 years of painting outside. And for the most part, it can be really rewarding. Um, you should, you know, be a bit aware of your surroundings. That's why a lot of people uh, don't like wearing headphones, and I can understand them, or at least having the headphones turned off, because, uh, you know, you want to be able to hear what's going on. Um, I haven't heard of too many bad experiences, even in cities. Um, knock on wood. Also, one thing that's kind of nice is you paint in places uh, you know, like New York City, I painted a lot on the streets and the people who don't have a, a reputation for being particularly friendly are really friendly to painters. Same with uh, somewhere like Paris. Um, people are just incredibly complimentary even though people who live there, so. Kind of a weird shape. And I often use the, uh, this is much too high, but I think it makes it a bit more interesting to have a bit more drama. I will say also for street painting, I think the, uh, uh, camera tripod setups, you know, with a push on box is, is better than a, like a French easel or something, just where it, because the footprint is so large. Yeah. Yeah. And it can uh, really kind of restrict where you're able to work. Compression of values in this, this tree here. It's gonna, I don't know if you stare at it, you'll see a lot of a variety in the lights and darks, but I want to keep everything really close together.
And as the light creeps around, the shadows are going to get more interesting over on this side, these really wonderfully blue, uh, warm kind of shadows. They're just soft. For repeating shapes that uh, give the sense of depth into the painting. In grade eight, darker parts above and becoming lighter parts. repeating patterns you can have like you know larger patterns and then medium and then maybe small medium large and that sort of gives the lead in these areas here still a bit too and uh, another thing always is this idea of um, you know using the color next to something to really get the kind of tiny little trick that I've discovered is, you know, if you have big areas like the sky back there and you leave them blank for a really long time, the painting uh, is going to look much less interesting to uh, people passing by. So especially if you're somewhere where you don't want to attract attention, um, you're unsure of the legality. I tend to leave the sky, you know, I'll draw an outline, but I'll leave it until the very, very end. Because as soon as you put the sky in, it's going to really look like a, a painting and you're going to get a lot more people stopping to, uh, to talk to you. So if you want to generally leave kind of large uh, masses unfinished, until the very end, it's just a, it can be a clever way of uh, avoiding uh, unnecessary attention. People will think you suck, but uh, it's better than having them all hang out.
now down here, it's even more interesting, you see? But I kind of like the, you know, you don't want, right now, the light and the shade is exactly the same. Whereas in mine, I have more shade than light. On the other hand, I really like that kind of longer light area up there. So we can just take that. Maybe even this, and then kind of, yeah, I guess it doesn't really make sense, but there are these weird little, you know, depends on what's going on over there. So. It's kind of a nicer shape, although it's even nicer in nature, that kind of longer area. And then a touch warmer. Okay, I think that's about it. Um, sort of everything I want to talk about. Like I say, painting cityscapes, you know, keep in mind the, the usual uh, compositional elements, larger elements, repeating, getting smaller, uh, interesting uh, patterns, variety in the shape size, and uh, this idea of working sort of middle of the day where you can get uh, we can really define the, the shape of the streets with the light sort of uh, coming up across the buildings rather than uh, uh, having all one side dark and, uh, and one side light. And actually, just uh, to briefly mention, you know, is now the shadow is creeping down and in a little while it's actually going to get, you know, if we pulled this down and then had it cross there, it's going to be quite interesting in a little bit. I find that I kind of like that uh, warmth in the shadow there, whereas it, it ends up being much too um, contrasted the way it is now. So I'm going to leave it the way I have it, but it would be nice to have repeating uh, littler areas down in the distance. So, okay, I hope you enjoyed it.